and Somodovov, meanwhile, could only be silent and be in a tremor of reverence, so that the proprieties were observed, and some explanation was essential. Even Ilyich felt that. He saw that all the guests were expecting something. The whole household was gathered together in the doorway, almost creeping, climbing over one another in their anxiety to see and hear him. What, what was horrid was that the head clerk in his foolishness remained standing. Why are you standing? said Ivan Ilyich, awkwardly motioning him to seat, seat on the, to a seat on the sofa beside him. Oh, don't trouble, I'll sit here. And Akim Petrovich hurriedly sat down on a chair, almost as was being put out for him by Somodovov, who remained obstinately standing. Can you imagine what happened, addressing him exclusively to Akim Petrovich, in a rather quavering, though free and easy voice? He was he even drawled out his words with special emphasis on some syllables, pronouncing his vowels ah like eh in the short felt and in short felt, and was conscious that he was being affected, but could not control himself. Some external force was at work. He was painfully conscious of many things at the moment. Can you imagine? I have only just come from Stefan Nikoforovich. Nikoforov, have you heard of him, perhaps? The privy councillor? You know, uh, on that special matter. Akim Petrovich bent his whole person forward respectively, as much as to say, of course we've heard of him. Uh, he's your neighbor now, Ivan Ilyich went on, for one instant for the sake of ease and good manners, addressing Selmadova. But he quickly turned away again again, on seeing the latter's eyes that made it made it absolutely no difference to him. Uh, the old fellow, as you know, has been dreaming all of his life of buying himself a house. Well, he's bought it, and a very pretty house, too. Yes, today was his birthday, and he has ne never celebrated it before. He used to even keep it secret from us. 